us on another edition of Safety Bites, powered by Mariner Gulf Consulting and Services with James Junkin and myself, Justin Long. We want to thank everybody that follows us on LinkedIn and YouTube. For those of you that haven't subscribed to our YouTube channel yet, uh, we welcome you to do so. You get there, you can find all of our video content from Safety Bites to safety shorts and, and webinars that we do. How you doing, Justin? I'm doing all right. Doing all right. You know, you know, each month we conduct our give back giveaway drawing with the focus of that being on professional development for safety professionals. So in January, the winner of a field guide to safety professional practice by Dr. David Proven was Bobby Sue Clawson. And Bobby Sue works as a safety manager with the Trumbull Corporation in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. So congratulations, Bobby Sue. We hope you enjoy the book as much as we have and it improves your safety practice. Our February Give Back giveaway will be another guide, the American Society of Safety Professionals Handbook, third edition. So it's ASSP Safety Professionals Handbook, third edition. This book is an over a, it's over $200 value and has quickly become a standard reference for occupational safety and health professionals, those that are studying for certification exams, and students that are pursuing their degree. The book covers a wide range of topics from approximately 90 different thought leaders, academics, and practitioners that, that are out there. And, and it really presents the latest research ideas and practical applications in occupational safety and health. To be entered to win ASSP Safety Professionals Handbook, third edition, go over to YouTube, hit that like button, and subscribe. At the end of the month, we'll take a drawing from our subscribers from our YouTube channel, and hopefully you'll be a winner. On a more serious note, in December, the Bureau of Labor Statistics released its report on workplace injuries that led to fatalities for the year 2021. There were 5,190 fatal work injuries in the United States in 2021. That was an 8.9% increase uh, from 2020. In 2020, we saw 4,764 workers lose their lives in workplace instances. That computes basically to a fatality rate of 3.6 per 100,000 full-time workers. This was the highest rate since 2016. Workplaces have become less safe, not more safe, but especially so for minor minority workers. The share of Black or African-American workers killed on the job reached an all-time high in 2021. In 2020, Black or African-American workers fatally injured on the job represented 11.4% of total fatalities. In 2021, that percentage increased to 12.6% of total fatalities. As a profession, we have much to do. We have much to do in systems design that move past regulator, uh, regulations, regulatory guidelines that look beyond reportable injuries and start talking about the gaps that affect some workers disproportionately. For example, women of color have injury rates higher than that of their male counterparts. Why? We have to look for answers to that question by examining the system in which all workers must contend. Hazards are best controlled in the design phase of the work, in the design of the system itself. The problem is not the workers. The workers are the answer to the problem. In order to be safe and being the SIF friend, one must begin with a system that addresses all hazards, including psychological hazards, psychosocial hazards, um, and physical hazards, along with health hazards. In many instances, training and retraining has been the default corrective action for all workplace instances. As safety professionals, we know that that is not the case. Training can be a part of it. It can be part of a robust solution, but training alone cannot address all system faults. So when, one of the many ways that we at Mariner Gulf are addressing serious injured fatalities with our clients is to ensure that we have examined the work process, the design of the system, and we have implemented 
the higher end of the hierarchy of flows uh, of controls as much as possible. Then we adopt life-saving rules, which include the actions over which a worker has control. And we hammer that into the process of everything we do. So we begin with the design, we begin with the controls, we work our way from elimination, substitution, engineering, administrative, PPE, and we incorporate our life-saving rules. Now, each organization should seek to identify its own life-saving rules. Ours are adopted from the International Association of Oil and Gas Producers, and they are work authorization, bypassing safety controls, hot work, energy isolation, confined space, working at heights, safe mechanical lifting, line of fire, and driving. These are our life-saving rules. But today on this safety bite, I'd like to discuss with Justin the different types of life-saving rules that companies can examine because these rules need to be unique to your organization based on the hazards your workers have to contend with. What do you think, Justin? It's sad to hear numbers like that in 2023. Considering how many fatalities we worked through and investigated over the over the years, it's, it's just sad. Uh, it's it's plainly obvious what like we're that. doing is not working. What Don't we're doing right. is not working. It's been the subject of many uh, episodes uh, that, that we've talked about in the past, this SIF trend of workers coming to work. And why is it disproportionate amongst maybe um, – the, the minorities that we have that work with us, the, uh, you know, there, there's statistics are, are, are great things. And they, they are telling us that they are killed disproportionately to that of their, uh, for example, white male counterparts. So how do we fix it? Well, if, this, if the fatality in the instance are a result of the system, Okay, we all agree with that, that it's usually not the worker, it's the system. So when we design the system, we have to include all workers. And many times, and, and I'm, I'm not putting this out there to say there was any racist intent or at all, but many times uh, workers are not involved in the design of the system. We need better representation from all workforces when we're trying to design the system. What are your thoughts? Do you think that do you think that um, adjusting the number of uh, making adjustments to the number of African American women in the safety profession would potentially I think change that's how a, that's, that's being addressed? I think that's a start. I think not only should we encourage you know um, a lot of diversity, equity, and inclusion. That's a big buzzword nowadays. But we need everybody at the table. We need everybody at the table because if, if fatalities are the result of the system and people are being disproportionately killed at work at higher rates, we need to examine that. What is going on that African-Americans and black workers are being killed in the workplace disproportionately in the percentages? So that means we need seats at the table. Mm -hmm. We need to have more seats at the table. We need to listen to what people are saying. We need to investigate this uh, because this is part, uh, it, it, it's not an anomaly. It's been statistically the same for many years and it's time we do something about it. Considering that, do you think that, what do you think? Do you think it's a a matter of their voices aren't getting heard in, in terms of voicing the I think, I think I don't. I, well, I don't think it's a matter of their voice not being heard. I think when these systems were designed over the years, they didn't have a seat at the table to even have a voice. It's mm. not that anyone's ignoring their voice. They, they didn't have a voice. So these numbers, when we start talking about, you know, serious injuries and fatalities often resulting, most of the time resulting from some sort of defect within the system in which these workers have to contend, what is it that's happening in the system? Well, if you weren't part of the design of the system, that could be one of the issues. I don't know all the answers. I'm not even sure I know all the questions, but I do know this. When we say 12.6% of all total fatalities, 
were black or African American workers, and that's an increase over last year, we got a problem. That's significant. And we need to talk about what the problem is so we can get solutions. Thank you, everyone, uh, for viewing this episode of Safety Bites. Sometimes these conversations can be uncomfortable, and it's okay to be uncomfortable. You know what I'm most uncomfortable with? Workers not coming home safe from high hazard jobs. So please come over, comment, let us know what your thoughts are. Follow us out there on LinkedIn. We're always trying to challenge ourselves and each other into growing in this profession. And don't forget to uh, go over on our YouTube channel, hit that like button and subscribe, and check out our other video content. Until next time, be safe.